an important role in your health, but so do your behaviors and environment, such as what you eat and how physically active you are. Epigenetics is the study of how behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your gene works. Unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence, but they can change how your body reads a DNA sequence. That's our focus on this episode of Health Options as we dwell on the topic epigenetics and how nature and nurture interplay around it. If you're already wondering what this is all about, not to worry as we will get to break it down to your understanding. Welcome to Health Options, the program that not only tracks government policies on health, but helps you with the information you need to make informed choices about your health. Thanks for joining us on the program. I am Rabi Abdullah. You are watching Health Options and the topic is nature and natural perspectives of epigenetics and I am now being joined by a very familiar face on Health Options, Dr. John Tor Abide. He is a neurotoxicologist and integrative medicine expert. Good to see you again, Doctor. Thank you, Rabi. It is my pleasure to be back here. It's been a while. So let's quickly get down to the topic. Epigenetics, nature, and nature. I mean, for a layman, the question would be, what is this all about? Can you start on that note? Well, uh, thank you very much, Rabbi. Uh, part of uh, your introduction actually landed us where we want to be. That, uh, that is uh, our genes. You know, how we look, how our body, various body parts are formed is dependent on the genes that we inherit from both parents. That is, the, when a man and a woman meet, then you form an individual. And the gene template is the information template that is actually translated, that form the eyes, form the mouth, form the head, I mean the head, the various parts. But let's be very simple in this, in handling this topic. Epigenetics. What do you mean by epigenetics? Let me explain the word and how it all came about. Epi means above. Genetics means the genetic composition of the body that I have just I mean, described. Just like you said rightly, the gene sequence cannot, you know, be changed but it can be modified by environmental and other lifestyle you know factors now it is very common we ask the question how is it that two identical twins are drastically you know different in the way they may behave because if we go by the concept of gene inheritance, both of them had the same genes from the same man or I mean woman that, uh, you know, that brought them together. Another question would be, is it possible or how true it is that my mother or father was diabetic and then uh, uh, because I inherited the genes, I'm going to be also diabetic. I'm going to be also hypertensive. You know, scientific, I mean, science and medical science. Just all to add to what you just said, for instance, for uh, people whose parents had died of uh, cancer, maybe breast cancer, we've, uh, we've, 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 been, we've been told that, um, for instance, if one's mother dies of breast cancer, there's this, there's this tendency that the daughters, you know, the sisters, the daughters of that woman, you know, could come down with breast cancer too. They will, they will say that it's hereditary or because of the genes. Is the, that the same line of thought? Oh, the answer is actually no. And this is where uh, the, what has driven science into the field of uh, 
epigenetics. Let's have a very clear understanding. 75% of the inherited genes are described as non-expressive. They are dormant. They cannot be expressed. They are just inherited. Only 25% of the genes that can be expressed that you would uh, see that, yes, because your mother had this, you inherited this 100% genes, 75 are, are, are non-dominant, 25 are the dominant that can be expressed. Even the 25%, and I'm talking this in context of the question you've answered. The fact that I inherited those genes from my mother or father, am I also going to be uh, cancer? I mean, am I going to have cancer or diabetes? The answer is most likely, I mean, very likely, no. Because the expression of these genes is actually affected by environmental or what you call lifestyle. They are actually what you call the triggers of, uh, of these genes. Take, for example, in case of uh, the breast, uh, you know, cancer, the genes that is known to cause the breast cancer is what they call the BRCA1 and BRCA2, you know, genes. The fact that you had this BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, the lady had this, it does not mean that she may necessarily express these genes. However, her lifestyle and the environment cannot push her to expressing those genes. So that idea has been actually debunked in modern science that cancer is not uh, you know genetics if you want to know five percent only five percent of causes of cancer are linked to you know genetic expression the rest of the factors that actually make one to come down with uh, you know cancer they're the environmental you know factors i mean uh, lifestyles okay. so i mean to answer your question that has been debunked and the clear answer came out of what you call the genome study that was launched by president clinton in 1990 where over 25,000 genes of the human bodies were clearly mapped up and they say that the genes can only be triggered to express mostly by environmental or lifestyle factors. Wow, since uh, we've been able to establish this now, I think I now understand why in some families you see, you have a situation whereby uh, maybe either the father or the mother died of one ailment, maybe cancer, diabetes or the likes, and you see some coming down with it and some never come down with it. So what you've just explained points to the fact that lifestyle and environment, you know, are those triggers, you know, are those triggers for such? Because it means if, if you if you're not affected by these two, it's very likely that whether your father or mother had died of a particular disease, it's not very likely that you die of of same disease. Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, Rabbit, there is a there's a caveat in this, and let me go ahead and then explain it. Mm -hmm. More than often, where you see that the mother had uh, cancer or diabetes and the daughter also or, or son also came down uh, with uh, diabetes it, because both of them had cohabitated under the same environmental factors, especially lifestyle. You know, they were eating the same sub, uh, type of diet. Yeah. The same, the, you know, if, especially in some houses, if uh, the father or the mother are the ones that were sleeping late, the children will also oh, grow up to be sleeping, sleeping the, you know, late. Yeah. So these environmental factors or lifestyle has actually been passed on to them. And it is the lifestyle that actually triggers the expression of, uh, of these uh, genes. Remember, only 25% of the genes are actually, you know, um, express. Okay, so now that we've uh, been able to you know, establish this, l let's look at um, how nature, because you know, if we look at the topic, nature and nurture, as we talk about epigenetics, explain this two, these two variables, nature and nurture. Simply put, nature that is one's genetic, you know, makeup. The fact that I inherited this 
genes from my parents. You have those genes inherently in you. As I said, these genes may not, you know, be expressed. But if the lifestyle, which is what we refer to as, you know, nature or the environment, forces these genes to be, you know, expressed, then that is why you have nature. Nature simply referring to the genetic, you know, composition of an individual while nurture simply means lifestyle or environmental, you know, factors that affects the expression of the genes. Okay. So what do we do to, to make sure that um, those genes remain dormant and don't get triggered thereby predisposing us to those ailments that we probably wouldn't have wished for? Very good question. And that's why the emphasis these days in educating people or even managing diseases is on lifestyle factors and what do you mean by lifestyle take for example somebody who is excessively under stress and i would like to emphasize stress stress now forces stress is considered as a risk factor that encourages the expression of you know the genes that we manifest in form of you know disease mm -hmm. so obviously it stands to reason that you try to avoid the stress and even where you cannot avoid the stress you have to manage the stress very well so that the stress that not force the expression of disease causing genes that is one example sleep Sleep is so important, Rabbi, that if you know the importance of you know, sleep in our health, it's more than our bank account. But most of us don't know about this. And I think this is why I commend the, I mean, the efforts of NTA for programs, educational programs like this. Lack of sleep or inadequate sleep has been shown and associated with many diseases as triggering or triggers or risk factors. Diabetes is one. Cancer is another. Hypertension is another. I've already mentioned, you know, stress. Mm -hmm. You also look at the dietary, you know, composition. When you eat or when you take a balanced diet, and these days we don't just talk about a balanced diet, we talk about adequate diet. And the, the adequate diet is that diet which you eat and it is able to be digested and assimilated and transported to the cells so that it can be used, you know, appropriately. So diet is another factor that it is also very important. So you have to eat the right diet. The sec I mean, the other, other factors require things like a sedentary, you know, living. This is what we talk about physical exercise. Lack of physical exercise or routine exercise would predispose us to uh, some of these, uh, you know, diseases like diabetes and then hypertension and then others. Another thing that it is also very important is what we call emotional stability. In these days, you look at disease in terms of, uh, you know, emotion. You look at disease in terms of spirituality. You look at disease in terms of, you know, you know, where balance, it is really very important. And that's why we emphasize that for us to be disease free or to live a quality life, we should avoid toxic and emotional relationship, abusive relationship. These are some of the factors that can actually also trigger the expression of disease causing, you know, genes. That's why when you are, the, some of these people who are in abusive relationship, some of them, they become, I mean, they developed, you know, um, uh, I mean, obesity. They will, they, will, they will be depressed. There is, uh, you know, depression. Then there is uh, obesity. This is uh, weight gain. And there are several other, you know, factors. We, even the way you relate with your colleagues. If you don't relate, uh, you know, very well with your colleagues, it constitutes what you call, uh, you know, emotional, you know, trauma. You are at 
at work, you are not uh, relating very well. It also causes uh, psychological stress. All factors that may predispose to expression of wrong genes or genes that will cause, you know, disease. Normally, these genes will be inactive. They will not be expressed at, uh, at all. Take, for example, the case of, you know, cancer. The cancer-causing genes have what you call, uh, I mean, there are also suppressor, cancer suppressor genes. They suppress the expression of, uh, you know, the cancer genes. Mm -hmm. However, if you are under so much stress, you are not eating well, you are not sleeping well, it triggers the expression of these uh, cancer-causing genes, or it suppresses the efficiency of the suppressor or the cancer suppressor genes. And the cancer is easily, you know, express. Okay, you know, as a neurotoxicologist, um, I, I want you to take us through, you know, at what point or how an individual c could begin to, you know, realize that his stress level, you know, is at a point that could become destructive to him or to his health. Well, we say the best doctor is yourself. And uh, that's why you have to monitor your body very well. You can see that you are somebody, maybe before you took on to this job, you are calm, you weren't uh, somebody that, was, that will become easily irritated. However, if you are under stress, you will notice that drift in your own personality. The moment you start noticing that uh, drift in your personality, even sometimes somebody says uh, good morning to you, it mm -hmm. becomes, I mean, offensive. <laughs> you got to know that something is, I mean, going wrong. So you must take the appropriate, you know, uh, you know, steps. Then another example is that of lack of, you know, sleep. When you don't have adequate sleep, you come to work, you see that you cannot concentrate. You cannot even focus. You cannot communicate very well. The moment you start seeing these deviances in your life, you know that something is going wrong. Mm. Plus, need for medical checkups will really help and take you to the right you know, face. And that's why each and every one of us should be able to subject themselves to annual medical checkups. So that uh, these derangements can be detected at an early age. As I always say, disease is a process. It's like going from here to, I mean, Lagos. Take, for example, Abuja is a, is a safe point. The time you start moving, you go to Lokoja, you get to Ibadan. Where did, you, did we meet you or where did your doctor meet you in this process? Mm -hmm. Were you just in, in Lokoja? It's easier for him to bring you back. Or is it you've gone down to Ibadan, it takes more time and then efforts to bring you back. Rabbi, let us not forget our topic for discussion today. Mm -hmm. That is nature and nature. Mm -hmm. I want to give some graphic examples so that people can understand yeah. the role that nature plays even on nature. Mm -hmm. Remember I had said that nature, you are looking at the genetic composition and how these genes are expressed, determined by your nurture, which is the environmental factors. Mm -hmm. Then, for example, I had, uh, I mean, uh, somebody I knew very well were growing up as, uh, you know, kids. Because he was in this environment, this young man had to sit for GCE over six times. Okay. Here he was not, uh, you know, passing. Somehow he had the opportunity to go to the United States and to go to, to school. There again, despite his, what you may perceive as his nature, the genes that he, he inherited, uh, poor genes or no intelligent genes to, to pass his yeah, own genes. Uh, of a dollar. Uh, uh, what? A, a dollar. Uh, uh, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> now when he got to the United States, the environmental factors now triggered him. He became a different this, uh, person. This guy studied and made it up to PhD level and he is now a professor. Mm. So you can see that by the nature, uh, that is... Uh, his composition that was expressed here, he was still being inhibited by the nurture. Now, when he got to a different environment, 
with different lifestyle, different sentiment, the way things are doing, he became a first class, you know, student. So this is it. Then another example that you can also uh, think about, why is it that people are compulsively aggressive? People who are in a bad, you know, relationship. It doesn't mean that that is how they, they are formed initially, but that relationship, how he is relating with the husband or even the children or whatever, forces him to display and manifest a different personality. Another thing you see is that he starts or she starts gaining weight. He, I mean, he, he becomes, you know, obese. So, nature and versus nature is really very important and this had triggered a lot of questions and this is what led to a new field of study that we are now discussing and calling epigenetics. Epigenetics today is one of those areas of uh, research where there is so much money for those of you who are grant uh, writers. Mm. If you can write a proposal on uh, this and how you're going to do studies on uh, epigenetics, you would easily be you know, found it. Okay, so as we round up, just give us your final shot on the topic. Yeah, round it up. Well, the take home message is this. As human, we inherit genes from our parents. That is mother and father. That's why you say, oh, he looks like his father. He looks at uh, his, um, I mean, mother. mother. Yeah. But the expression of these genes depends on environmental you know factors especially in the context of disease let me use this as an example gone are the days when we are told that nobody knows the cause of cancer today they've come to know that 90 to 95 percent causes of cancer are due to environmental factors it, these are the trigger factors that will trigger the expression of those uh, cancer genes so Please, let us all be guided by this. Things like uh, taking care of our, ourselves, that is what I call, uh, you know, how do you actually build health around yourself? Making sure you sleep well, very well, you take the, uh, you know, the right, uh, you know, diet, engage in, uh, I mean, uh, exercise. Physical activities. Uh, uh, physical activities, yeah. indulge in the use of what we call uh, probiotics that stimulate your microbiome that is responsible for your immune system and maintain healthy, healthy and spiritual relationship and for people who are known to be really calm you see them they rarely suffer from conditions like uh, you know hypertension yeah. they are very very calm there's so nothing worries them when you continue to hype yourself all around that is where your blood pressure may You're spike up, up. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. John Toabide, for your insights. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot to gain from uh, your expose on this episode. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rabia. That does it on this episode of Health Options. You can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. I am Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. Take life easy and do not neglect your health. Bye for now.